Um, and we are going to get started again um, with our next presentation. Um, Keith Escalon, UC Cooperative Extension Specialist, uh, Plant Pathologist. Um, he will be presenting today on research update on advancing biopesticide technologies for managing of Pierce's disease. Thank you, Aki, for joining us. Of course, thank you very much, Cindy, for inviting me to share some of these uh, preliminary results from our field uh, trial uh, that we have done in uh, 2022. Uh, I appreciate that. So um, today I'm going to give you a kind of a preliminary results uh, from our Pierce's disease biocontrol technologies that we have been trying to use to control uh, in uh, California. The, this is the field trial that we have uh, done it uh, in um, on our campus uh, at UC Davis. So before I start my talk, I would like to acknowledge our collaborator. Um, uh, first of all, Molly Arakuin, uh, who is a technician in my laboratory, uh, who was uh, responsible for all these uh, trial and then she has done an uh, awesome job. I uh, also would like to thank to Anika King Hapwala, who is the representative of the um, one of the um, sorry about that. Um, the, the, the treatment that we have applied, uh, which I'm going to talk about it, uh, Philip Rosalson and Steve Lindow are also collaborative. Um, uh, on this study that uh, I'm going to talk more about uh, what their involvement were. I just want to give you a little bit of uh, background information. Uh, you all know that the uh, Pierce's disease caused by the Xylella fastidiosa, uh, now we are calling it a subspecies of uh, fastidiosa. Uh, it is a gram-negative, a uh, slow-growing bacterium, uh, which is uh, colonized plant tissue, specifically xylem, which is that they also call it the xylem limited uh, bacterium. Um, because of that, um, uh, the, the, the symptoms are uh, look like um, the, the, the drought that I'm going to show you some of those information. Anyway, uh, the disease is called Pierce's disease. Uh, that's name uh, came from the scientist who has uh, first started working on this bacterium a uh, long time ago. So Pierce's disease has a long history in California. It has been first found in 1880 uh, for last more than 100 years. It has been causing a uh, tremendous of damage, especially in Southern California where we have the effective vector. Uh, it has changed the agriculture uh, of the grapevine uh, industry, and then uh, here we are, uh, we are dealing, uh, still dealing with this disease. So here's a, a couple of the pictures to uh, give you an idea how these uh, bacterium could, could colonize in the xylem tissues. Uh, these are the, 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 some of the publications that I found. So the one on the, uh, the, the one to see that you are here is that the, you see a lot of bacteria. This is the xylem vessels. When they plug in the vessels, they just pluck vessels, as you can see physically. So the picture on the right is also showing a good colonization of the xylem vessels. So uh, it, there are a lot of studies that has been done by my colleagues in uh, UC Riverside, uh, who has been demonstrated that the, these bacterium could uh, degrade the pore membrane in, in the xylem vessels. They can move uh, physically um, uh, up and down uh, within the plant tissue which uh, makes it uh, this disease progress uh, within a short time uh, within the plant. So uh, I'm sure you all her have heard about it. Xylella fastidiosa has a white host range. Uh, so far more than 300 uh, tree species have been uh, identified as a host in California. Vitis vinifera which is grapevine is the one of the major um, uh, problem. Uh, it has been also found on, on citrus, it hasn't been uh, confirmed in California, but uh, in other parts of the world it has been uh, found, which in California it's a big concern. Uh, we have uh, a lot of citrus orchard. Besides the uh, commercial crops, it has also been uh, found on the landscape and other uh, native plants. Liquid amber is one of the most common 
uh, host species that uh, I myself have been coming across and then seeing a lot. So in terms of the inoculum source or distribution and host, uh, this bacterium uh, doesn't have uh, any problem for uh, moving from host to host and then surviving uh, uh, in uh, California um, uh, nature in agricultural areas. So here's the, one of the, uh, the the distribution map that I was able to find um, uh, of the disease in California, as you can see, uh, all the blue lines has been confirmed. Uh, this is not the latest. Uh, the, the latest date was that the 2007, uh, which um, uh, I'm sure uh, it has been progressed a lot. So just to give you an idea how much uh, this disease progress in California. So uh, this disease uh, is uh, vectored by the uh, sap-sucking insects. Glassy wing sharpshooter is one of the major um, uh, the vector in Southern California, um, uh, which is uh, one of the most effective vector. This is again uh, one of the old um, the, the 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 map that I was able to find in 2018. So the, these um, the colored area are showing the current distribution of this uh, glassy wing sharpshooter. I believe uh, recently it has been found uh, in uh, around the Kern County. So of course, um, our wine grape growers in North coastal areas have been concerned about it because this vector seems to be uh, the most um, uh, efficient uh, vector of the disease in terms of the distribution um, uh, in the vineyard. So there are other uh, sub-sucking vectors, uh, which is uh, one of them is the blue-green sharpshooter uh, um, uh, that has been uh, identified as the uh, one of the vector in North Coast area, uh, as well as a green sharpshooter and also a red-headed sharpshooter. So I'm not an entomologist. I'm not going to get into the uh, more onto the vector uh, ideas. I just wanted to give you a, a broader perspective of the how this uh, pathogen could be moved from one location to another location. Here's another uh, the point for this vector is that this vector has been not as effective as the glassific sharpshooter, but this vector has a wide host range in the riparian areas, which means especially in a uh, north coastal area where we have a lot of riparian areas, these vectors could go back and forth uh, in the riparian areas. It can even find and feed on the some, uh, not only perennial, but also some annual uh, plants in the native vegetation. Because of that, that makes it very difficult to have an efficient and uh, sustainable control of the, this vector. That's why uh, probably we have been having uh, these uh, Pierce's disease on, on all over the California. In here, I just would like to, um, I just wanted to show you some of the, uh, these common symptoms. Uh, Monica also showed you the, uh, some of those symptoms comparing with the Pierce's disease in her talk. So uh, as you can see that the disease is the leaf scorch, uh, which is the symptom on the uh, Chardonnay, which is a white variety. Uh, the symptoms on the red varieties are quite a little bit uh, different. I'm going to show you those pictures as well. As you can see that the, these symptoms could be confused sometime uh, with the ESCA uh, pathogen, uh, which is the group of the number of the disease, fungal disease that uh, my lab has been also working on it. So the reason uh, that we have the, these kind of symptoms is that the, the, when you look at the, uh, the, 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 where the pathogen uh, colonize and then cause problem is that the, in the xylem, which is in the wood tissue, so what they do is that they colonize that physically or secondary metabolite, they produce, they cause kind of like the drought effect on the plants. Plants are showing uh, in here like the kind of like the water deficient, deficiency, uh, lack of the water kind of symptoms. Some of the symptoms could start between the rain and uh, most of the symptom could be the leaf scorch, which is uh, also the common one of the common name of the, this disease, leaf scorching disease, uh, it also caused problem on almond on other um, uh, the agricultural crop as well. The one on the right is the showing the severe uh, symptom of the Pierce's disease on Chardonnay. 
here's uh, uh, how the disease looked like in very uh, heavily infected vineyard in Halsburg area um, in northern um, grape growing areas. So when it comes to disease, it, if it is called, it can cause like the serious damage. You can also see riparian areas right around the, uh, this vineyard that um, uh, the, the, you can imagine um, the, how efficient these vectors could be uh, on these diseases. So here's another uh, the severe symptom of the disease. When it comes to red varieties in here, uh, Cabernet Franc, uh, that uh, uh, the similar symptoms, but uh, when you see the like the margin of the the the, the leaf scorch has a little bit reddish. Uh, so that's like the uh, very characteristic symptom in here. Um, uh, as a, a plant pathologist, we call these beautiful symptoms, but we don't say out loud. Um, uh, so the, uh, these are the, like the showing uh, that the quite interesting symptoms. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to give you an idea how uh, these symptoms um, uh, are different between the white and uh, red varieties. So at the end, these shoots could be uh, completely uh, leafless, uh, that, that they, all the leaves could be uh, dropped off and then um, uh, that could cause the damage. Another common symptom is the matchstick. As you can see, the petiole is still uh, standing on the uh, lignified wood, but there is no uh, leaf uh, attached to it. As you remember that the, when fall come, which is the right now, uh, all of the, the deciduous plants, including uh, grapevine, uh, lose their leaves uh, based on the where they are attached to the lignified food because of the they are plant is the plant is getting into the dormancy where plant is producing kind of like the suberin to detach the those leaves when it comes to metastatic symptoms the stick is still standing there and then this symptom could be before the harvest before the fall um, uh, around the harvest time uh, it depends on the um, uh, the severity of the of the uh, disease that you can see this called the matchstick kind of the symptom. Another common symptom is the green island on lignified uh, shoots uh, on the on the on the, um, the grapevine. So these are the very common uh, symptoms that you can see. Here's the here's the point. So you don't have to have all of these symptoms once in order to confirm or say that this is the Pierce's disease. It depends on the condition, colonization of the pathogen and uh, location. Each one of those or all of those could show as a symptom on, on, on Pierce's uh, disease. Sometimes Pierce's disease may be inoculated or colonized in the plant tissue, but they may not show the symptoms because they may not have the enough um, um, the density within the tissue to show the symptoms. It may be symptomless. It may also show the symptom for next year. Or these symptomatic plants may be infected by the disease for a year before or two years before. It depends on the, again, all conditions. So you cannot uh, judge based on the uh, symptoms when the um, first infestation started on these um, wines. But these are the very characteristic uh, common symptoms of the disease. Shriveled berry is the is the another uh, the symptom in here. You can see the like the uh, shriveled berry symptoms on both um, white and uh, also red varieties. It's, it's a quite devastative um, uh, when you have the heavy infestation uh, on the grapevine. So um, uh, that's the damage that you could see. So I just want to address the elephant in the room, olive decline in Europe uh, that has been uh, all over the news for um, uh, several years. And then uh, the, the another Xylella uh, fastidiosa, but this time uh, Xylella fastidiosa uh, pauca, which is a different subspecies that has been uh, found uh, causing the oil, uh, olive decline in all over the Europe. Uh, it started in, in Italy. And uh, there are a lot of uh, publication has been come out that, that they identified um, uh, with this disease. Uh, it's also associated with other 
uh, uh, factors, secondary or environmental condition as well. Um, so we don't have uh, this uh, specific um, uh, the subspecies in California or United States, I would say. So they also have different uh, group of the vector. Uh, their vector uh, seems to be more effective, efficient than the vectors that we have in California. So that could probably making uh, this disease more uh, severe um, uh, uh, on olives uh, in Europe. So this is the number that I found uh, online again. Pierce's disease is, is, is one of the important problem that could cost millions of dollars. Now we have a, a Pierce's disease, um, um, uh, the task force in California to, to get um, uh, work on that. So how did I get involved with this project? So uh, as a mycologist uh, working on the fungal diseases, as an extension specialist, of course, uh, my job is to um, uh, identify uh, uh, the possible um, uh, the, the control methods uh, for our growers, especially uh, grape growers in California. So uh, this is a, a Pierce's disease board uh, funded project. This is the, as I mentioned to you, the, the first years of the projects. So the develop or uh, find out the efficacy of the biopesticide available biopesticide to control or prevent a Pierce's disease in California. So when we look at the study design uh, in this study, what we did is that the, uh, we used uh, one of the uh, bacterial phage, uh, which is a viral, um, uh, the strain that could um, attack uh, or colonize or kill uh, bacteria. So uh, these are all uh, known um, uh, scientific phenomenon. Uh, the one of the company uh, has uh, identified or came up with a, a product. Actually, that product is. Um, um, right now registered and also um, um, the, the, uh, on grapevine. But in this trial, uh, we wanted to uh, uh, try uh, to, to the field trial and then compare with the other possible biocontrol agents. In this trial, we try, um, the, the, the product is called the Xyla P PD. Uh, we tried their label rate to compare, uh, to get you some um, more information. We also uh, try it in comparison with the other biocontrol agents that uh, we try in this uh, experiment. So other uh, biocontrol agents that we use, which is the one of them is the Parabook Holderia uh, phytofirmans, uh, which is a very well known um, a group of the bacteria, which is gram negative, and then uh, that is known as um, uh, colonizing the xylem vessels or the wood tissues of the plant and and uh, uh, protecting or causing beneficial uh, anything to controlling the diseases um, uh, um, of the roots. Uh, the, this uh, particular uh, strain has been uh, uh, found in a uh, root of the onion. And um, our colleagues, Dr. Steve Lindo uh, from UC Berkeley has uh, studied on this bacteria and has done some work on uh, application of the, these bacteria uh, with the injection, with the spray, in the, and also uh, application in the greenhouse, he has uh, gotten some positive, good uh, prevention and controlling uh, of the, the Pierce's disease. So in this trial, we also wanted to uh, try these bacteria as well. So other two bacteria, Pseudomonas uh, virivatara and uh, Parabucholderia, no, sorry, Acromobacter xylosatiens and Pseudomonas uh, viridiflora, uh, these two bacteria has been identified by uh, another good friends and our, our colleagues, Dr. Phil Rosalzen laboratory, who has been uh, working on this, um, um, uh, looking for the beneficial endophytic microbiomes of the grapevine. And he identified, or his lab group himself, and uh, identified the two of the, these bacteria that has been working, preventing and controlling the Pierce's disease. And uh, he has uh, published a number of the publication. Uh, so in this trial, we also want to include that. Not only uh, we uh, 
applied these individual bacteria or our bacterial fish, uh, we also wanted to um, uh, combine uh, these individuals uh, with the fish uh, to see the, if they have any combined effect. The one of the reason that we uh, uh, wanted to combine these is that the, when we look at the uh, mode of action of the, those uh, biocontrol agents, uh, especially these beneficial bacteria, so they tend to colonize the plant tissue and then increase the defense mechanism of the plant tissue against the uh, xylella fastidiosa. That's like the, the primary mode of action of that. So we just wanted to have that preventative action of that. And then um, xylella fee, which is the bacteriophage, are, are known to uh, the colonize or uh, attack the uh, bacteria to kill the bacteria of tissues as a, as, a, as a disease of the bacteria. So we also wanted to see the curative uh, function of it. And then we wanted to compare individual and also combine effect of it. Of course, in our trial, we also wanted the positive control. We uh, artificially inoculated these um, uh, the wines with the uh, Xylella fastidiosa, one of the active strain, and then we uh, wanted to challenge them to see, and then as well as we had the negative control by our pesticide. So this trial has been uh, set up in our uh, field in UC Davis Armstrong Vineyard. We use Bernie Frank uh, cultivar, which is uh, 11, 12 years old, uh, the grapevine, which shows a very good uh, symptom of the Pierce's disease on artificial uh, infection. We used like the one of the recent active uh, strain of the Xylella fastidiosa in this trial, and then we used the randomized uh, block drawing, and then we used uh, 10 wines uh, for treatment, and then we randomly choose. Uh, for shoots or for each treatment and then we apply uh, these treatments on those shoots. <clears throat> Again, in this trial, uh, we only focus on the injection of the, these products and uh, so there are other methods that need to be exposed. Um, uh, well, we are uh, planning to expose uh, other alternatives uh, in uh, our next year uh, trial. So this is the simple our uh, trial design uh, that um, uh, we uh, showing that the randomized block design. So what we did in this experiment is that uh, um, we um, injected um, uh, these um, uh, the, the the biocontrol agents um, in the uh, shoot space of the shoot from the between the first and second node, as you can see here, and then. Um, Later on, um, we applied the biocontrol agents and then come back uh, uh, with the, um, um, the, the, the injection of the, uh, the, the pathogen. So for the injection, we used the, the, this kind of like the injection, uh, the, the device that was uh, developed by the, uh, the Xylafi company. And uh, it's that uh, uh, quite efficient uh, when it comes to the injecting the small a diameter of the shoes. Again, um, um, uh, this is the experimental design. We apply these on the individual shoots. Um, uh, we haven't uh, come up with the design to how to most effectively uh, apply these um, uh, biocontrol agents in the plant yet. Just, just the exper experimental. So uh, this is the, the, the one that shows the delivery method. Uh, this is the, uh, the short movie that I uh, uh, made it uh, to show you um, how this device could distribute the, uh, the, the, the spray. So it has a, a needle opening in the both side. Uh, it, when it goes into the xylem, uh, it just uh, spread the, uh, the uh, either bacteriophage or also biocontrol agents. We use the same uh, device as you can see. Uh, Molly is showing how we did the uh, injection. So in this, again, uh, we use the green shoots just for the sake of the, um, uh, the experiment. Um, the, this question may come in your mind that they, uh, at the end, if everything goes well, are we going to inject every single uh, green shoots? No. Uh, so that also uh, needs to be 
um, um, the address that we are going to be uh, coming up that kind of tools that could be um, uh, uh, injected either on the cordon or supports or even uh, we are going to try to trunk of it. So anyway, so those are the uh, something that uh, needs to be studied in the future. Here's the uh, one of the, uh, the one that shows the where we puncture uh, both biocontrol agents also um, inoculated the the, uh, the the points the plant recovered or or produced the callus thing to recover from uh, the mechanical injury uh, that we made for injection. So. Uh, and then um, uh, what we did is that, uh, um, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, we applied, uh, uh, challenged these uh, supports with Xylella fastidiosa by uh, a drop puncture, which is a very common method. Uh, what you do is that uh, you put the, um, uh, the bacterium solution as a drop, like you can, as you can see, you just uh, make a needle uh, wound in the xylem the capillarity uh, effect of the plant just uh, sucks into the, um, the bacterium inside and then from there uh, bacteria can do uh, its own uh, tissue and then colonize it and then cause problem. So here's a, a very simple uh, study timeline uh, that shows uh, we uh, ap applied the biocontrol agents starting in uh, first week of May and then, uh, sorry about that, and then um, following day, we came back and then inoculate with the uh, uh, Xylella uh, fastidiosa. And then in some of the products, we also applied the second application and then uh, moved on. And um, we first evaluated uh, the trial in the uh, first week of August. And then we did multiple evaluation uh, based on the, um, uh, some of the literature that has been uh, um, that guided us. So this is the sample uh, that one of the positive sample that shows us that the, how this disease uh, could show symptom actually. But so our when we first uh, start seeing the these results, we were not planning to uh, present any of these the, the results, and then we had a field day because these uh, uh, results were like the, uh, the 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 one that was showing like the efficacy of the, these biocontrol agents and uh, uh, all the phage. We just wanted to share this information. Anyway, we had a, a field day to show this information. Some of you may or may not attend it. Uh, so we are gonna be uh, repeating the uh, same thing. Anyway, so what we did is that the, uh, we did the, uh, the disease rating uh, starting at the first week of the August. So uh, later on, uh, we also adapted a protocol uh, by Steve Lindo. Uh, so uh, by counting the number of the leaf in each shoots and, and then also each uh, 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 symptomatic leaves were uh, counted. So that was very efficient um, uh, results. And then um, Molly has done with my, my lab crew all of those works. After 17 weeks, we also collected uh, leaf petiole uh, samples to uh, confirm um, uh, presence of the or or not present of the Xylella fastidiosa by QPCR. Here are the preliminary results um, of the one year of the results that shows like the, the one on the uh, left uh, percentage of the Pierce's disease on the disease positive, uh, which is quite uh, about 45% of the disease that you can see. The second one is that the uh, xylophy, which is the bacteriophage, is the label uh, rate, which uh, shows a uh, quite significant um, reduction of the disease. And uh, the, the one that um, uh, we also saw that the, one of the, um, the, the biocontrol agents, um, sorry about that, biocontrol agents shows also very significant reduction of the of the disease control, which um, is uh, very exciting um, uh, results. So when you look at the uh, uh, the, the results from here, is that is the, this is the combination of the the one of the biocontrol and then uh, xyla phi, which is the the one of the best looking um, uh, the results uh, in terms of the disease reduction. As I I, I was telling you the earlier that the when you look at the mode of action of the these uh, both um, uh, think that the, it's kind of like the uh, make sense to get the, these kind of uh, results. Anyway, uh, some of those individual other biocontrol agents also show a significant reduction. Some of them didn't show 
and then uh, which shows to like the more disease severity than that one. Anyway, uh, so this is the healthy control uh, that there, we didn't inoculated anything on those. And then this vineyard is um, uh, the, 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 as, we, as, as we know, uh, a Pierce's disease free vineyard that we have been uh, working on it. So when we compare with the uh, the quantification of the QPCR test for the for the xylella uh, xylella fastidiosa, it's quite uh, uh, matching uh, uh, with the the results that we uh, recover from the, our first year uh, results. Um, that's interesting that we also uh, identified the very low rate of the healthy control as well as um, as much as we know that the, these vines are not in a credit, but um, uh, that's also uh, that kind of things that uh, that shows. Anyway, so these are um, uh, again. I want to stress out. These are the preliminary results. This is the one year uh, uh, of the results of the, our our trial. We are gonna be repeating these trials uh, two more years. Plus, uh, we are gonna be uh, doing the similar trial on heavily infested commercial vineyard in uh, uh, Sonoma area as well um, to, to see uh, if we apply some of these in a, in a larger scale uh, to see if we can have the uh, control in real life. So conclusion of the, of the trial is that the, all of the biopesticide used in this study show the significant either prevention or control of the diseases. And um, uh, the vines treated with the xylophy, which is the bacteriophage, also show the 50% um, the, the of the, the fever foliar symptom, as well as the, uh, the presence of the uh, xylella fastidiosa. And um, um, when we combine uh, these uh, biopesticides, they perform uh, much, much better uh, than individuals. With that, I would like to thank to um, uh, our collaborators, um, uh, AP Infatech, and also I would like to thank the CDFA Pierce's Disease uh, Glass Wing Sharpshooter Board for funding uh, this project, uh, as well as uh, UC Davis uh, um, and Transportation Department uh, who uh, let us use their grapevine or vineyard uh, for, for this experiment. Um, not about this one, but um, uh, I also work on the other, uh, uh, the common grapevine uh, diseases, including uh, uh, powdery mildew, botrytis, sour rot, grapevine trunk diseases. We have a, a lot of field trial um, uh, that we have been uh, uh, doing that since we took over this position uh, from Dr. Gubler's position. So uh, if you are pest control advisor, vineyard manager and if you are uh, uh, about to set up a program for uh, not only Pierce's disease, not for, sorry, for uh, not only powdery mildew, botrytis and grapevine trunk diseases, please visit this lab, lab, lab website. You will see all the uh, recent studies about the reports that will give you an idea what kind of program or what kind of uh, new products, uh, including uh, some uh, biocontrol agents uh, as well as the organics. Uh, are present to help you uh, developing your own program. So with that, I would like to have um, uh, questions if you have any. Okay, Michelle, it will be coming on to ask the questions. Yes, hello. Um, we The first question is, how can you definitively tell the difference between ESCA leaf scorch and simple heat leaf scorch in clay soils? Very good question. That was my point. Because mm -hmm. both of the diseases uh, are colonizing the xylem vessels, plugging the those xylem vessels, causing kind of like the, um, the drought symptoms. But common ESCA symptoms are also known as tiger stripe symptoms, which is the, the one that shows like the, the between the veins. Um, I would also say that the, the Pierce's disease show more scorching around the leaves if you have to. But again, there is no definitive um, description. They both show the similar um, symptom. But Esca disease don't show um, uh, white island, uh, um, the matchstick and um, others. Okay, Esca also on the fruit shows measles. 
because ASCA group of the pathogen produce secondary metabolite, those metabolites could cause measles and then also different symptoms, but not the patient disease. Okay. Okay, so the, the next question are um, is phages are extremely uh, specific. Is the phage product a single phage strain or a mix of strains? Wow, you got me. Okay, that's not the question for me. I believe as well as, as much as I know as, as the single, but I might be wrong. Uh, that question, I am. please send me an email. I am going to address that question for you. Okay. Um, the next question, does the injector have to be cleaned between injection? Yes. So we haven't gotten that point yet. Yes. Um, um, the, because you are uh, putting that injectant in the xylem of the plant and um, the, that xylem injector could be uh, uh, contaminated by not only bacterium but also there are a lot of viral diseases including some of the ESCA that we are talking about it that could be the potential injection yes at that uh, you have to uh, clean those injectors again this is the research study we are not recommending anything at this point we are just sharing the information with you guys this is not like that hey take this and then go move like that, that we are not there yet we, this is the first year resu results that I am sharing with you. Anyway, uh, yes, at the end, uh, we are gonna come up a kind of protocol that uh, how you can spray. Basically, uh, you can use either ethanol, um, for the ethanol may not uh, control the, the, the viral diseases, um, but again, um, um, hasn't been confirmed yet, but uh, we will come up with that um, uh, the point, uh, point, okay? It could be either bleach, certain percentage could be clean, yes. Bottom line is, yes, you have to clean from, at least from wine to wine. Um, the next question, will there be any work done by foliar trials or biologicals for PD? Yes, yes, I would love to do that. And then uh, I know that the Steve Lindo has uh, done studies, uh, has uh, found some uh, positive effect of it and then he also explained how uh, those um, biocontrol agents may enter into the plant uh, either stroma or natural opening in the plants i would like to do, to do that as well yes next year as well as um, uh, we are also working on how we can apply these in the soil so these biocontrol agents are um, uh, produced in the laboratory and then uh, we are thinking of that how we can ferment these biocontrol agents in a larger scale what if, if we give them as a soil dredge what's gonna happen uh, are they gonna be picked up kind of things but well, think about that one of them is found that one so we are gonna explore uh, that part of it as well have you had any success with rhyme on trunk disease okay it's, it's not related to question uh, but <laughs> You gotta watch my another uh, talk that I am giving it. Uh, yes, uh, for the rhyme, uh, just to give you um, uh, that brief information about it. So when we apply a rhyme, rhyme is the fulitrophil, uh, the, the fungicide uh, that has been um, uh, used for uh, many other diseases, including grape and trunk diseases. Um, in our um, uh, field trial that we have been uh, trying it, uh, we have uh, found out that the, when you apply them direct onto the pruning wound, they have a good efficacy of uh, protecting the pruning wounds. Uh, we have also explored of injecting, um, the, not injecting, forget about what I said, drenching in the, the, in the soil as a, as a soil drench that could be um, uh, possibly picked up and also uh, um, applying on the pruning wounds. We have uh, get some positive results. Uh, some of those results, uh, I'm gonna put in that presentation in my lab website, and then you can have an idea. Yes, there are some efficacy on um, uh, grapevine trunk diseases, as well as we have other um, uh, other biocontrol agents and also other fungicide that has been um, uh, that experimentally working uh, uh, on that one. So yeah, go to my web the trunk disease um, talks or presentation 
and I just gave another talk yesterday in here and in San Luis Obispo. So yeah, get that information or send me an email, I'm gonna send it to you, okay? Um, once the bacteriophage is injected, does it induce cascade signaling in the grapevine? Okay, so uh, that information is beyond uh, my knowledge. Uh, what I know is that the, uh, the phage doesn't stay in the grapevine for a longer term. Uh, that requires application uh, what is once a year. Uh, that's my understanding from the, from the products. And uh, again, send me email. I'm going to get that information to you as well. You are asking me the technical information about the registered product, so I don't want to get into the, uh, the thing. So, okay. Well, what else? How durable is the effect of the phage application protecting the vine from XF? Again, um, uh, in this trial, um, we started um, evaluating the R trial beginning of the August, uh, which is the time that uh, plants start showing symptoms until the before the harvest. So all the data that I show you during the whole summer, that means in that whole summer, uh, whatever it is that was able to work. But keep in your mind that we also inoculated um, uh, the pathogen once. In a real life, a vector may go back and forth. We have no idea. So we are going to be doing that one uh, in a commercial setting as well so we don't have it but I, anyway my understanding from the, to the from the company's uh, uh, product is that uh, so this is not the something that you can apply once and then forget about it so you have to apply periodically uh, that's why uh, the, the one of the goals that we also wanted to include in this trial the biocontrol agents that the, they have a better chance to stay in the xylem tissue longer than we expected because the originally two of the bacteria were isolated from the uh, from the xylem tissue of the uh, grapevine, which is an endophyte that we expect, and also um, uh, other um, the, the one that was isolated from the onion also showed that the colonization of the uh, of the of the xylem. So that's why we are um, uh, comparing these um, the, the 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 product together uh, together which one is going to work better so what we are going to do is that the next year we are going to keep this trial as if going and we are going to set the second trial for the next year in the different block so that way we can also do the longer observation second year observation in the the trial that we set up this year okay so more so what you need to do is that they come to my fifth day next year there's there's one more question um any data trialing lime sulfur as a post pruning ESCA treatment? Very good question. Thank you for asking that question. Okay, so um, uh, late Dr. Gubler has done uh, some uh, dormant lime sulfur application. I want to emphasize that the dormant lime sulfur, you cannot apply this lime sulfur when the plant is green, you can burn it down your plant. That's one. Second one is that, uh, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find any data that dormant lime sulfur application could target fruiting bodies of the ESCA or grapevine trunk diseases. Because of that, I don't have any data. I haven't done any, any research. I have heard Dr. Gubler has done it. Uh, that's why this question probably coming out. Uh, I do not recommend at this point based on the, uh, my experience and also based on the experiment that I, have, I haven't done. So what I can do that, that this is like the second or third question that I have been asked. What I need to do is that I need to do experiment on this. So um, um, uh, I might do another trial um, uh, this winter to target uh, some of those fruiting bodies to see if there is an efficacy of this. At this point, no data. Um, so people are wondering, how do we find out the date of your field day? Outdate. Oh, follow me on the Twitter. <laughs> so that's one. Uh, the second one is that the, all the information in my, okay, here's the homework. If you are pest control advisor and vineyard manager, if you are doing the vineyard thing, you got to 
memorize my lab website, okay? Escalan lab website at UCNR, and then uh, we put all our information, including uh, trial data, uh, the, the report, everything is that, that was give you an idea. We post all our information. I post all of my field trial, uh, especially um, I'm not active on the other social media, but the, uh, the Twitter. So I put all my talks uh, information where I'm gonna give talks, what I'm gonna talk about it, all the field days right there. So if you are there, if you are not the Twitter person, uh, just uh, look at in my website. Here is here are the, the rule of thumb. Uh, are most of the field trials for powdery mildew at the at the end of the July for botrytis? We haven't done it, but next year we may do it at the end of the July, beginning of the August. Uh, again, at the end of the July, before the harvest, just keep an eye on me that I'm going to let you know about field trials. And then come, we may provide free lunch. Okay, so there are no more questions. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you for having thank me. You, thank you, Keith. Um, do you mind, uh, in, do you have your Q&A box open? If you could type in the address of your page. Oh, yeah. I will do that. Lab. Um, if you're able to type it in, then um, <clears throat> I will yes, would I be able to easily go to your page. Yes, I will. And then if you Google my name, I, I'm probably only Akif in California. You will find <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna put that name right there. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Akif.